Hello and welcome to Footballers Wines. Yes, you heard me, Footballers Wines. All right, so we've slightly ripped the title off from a cheesy drama, but get over it. Coming up on the show today, we'll be tasting some cracking Sauvignon Blancs and Pinot Noirs with an Aussie who's got an Irish mum and an Italian dad, but who played for England. I'm so excited, I actually need a drink to calm down. We've got more wines for you today than an MP's expense account, but where would we be on footballer's wines without a footballer? And I'm delighted to say we have with us ex-Chelsea, Villa, Torino and Leeds player, Tony Dorigo. I feel we should clap you. I'm going to clap you. Thank you, crew Thank members. You. Can we Thank have some you. respect for this gentleman here? Thank you very much. It's so nice to have you here. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. I'm very excited. We've got a lot of drinking to be doing. Okay. Good. I'm looking forward As a to footballer, it. you're like that, I would imagine. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Not averse to that. That's fine. Let's give it a go. And how's your wine knowledge, Tony? We're going to talk a lot about your footballing career, but how's your wine knowledge? So-so. Um, I got into wine a little bit late. I enjoyed the glass of wine with some nice food, but not too great. I'm looking forward to learning a bit more. Well, me too, because when it comes to being a master of wine, I'm a bit of an Aaron Ramsey. I've had a bit of experience, but I'm still learning my trade. Luckily, I know a man who can show us a thing or two if you're up for it, Tony. Let's go. I'm up all night to get lucky if you are. I'm delighted to say we're joined by wine expert Nick Darlington from Red Squirrel Wines. Nick, hello, you're a bit of a blonde Tom Cruise, I have to say. It's working for me. What have you got for us? Well, we've got some excellent wine, which I'm sure that you're going to love, I'm sure, but Tony's going to love as well. They're grouped into a few categories. Okay. Home and away. Oh, he'll like that. He's Australian. Oh, I, like that. I can understand that. Uh, the home ones, Tony, are things that you might have come across before, they're probably long time favourites. The away wines though, a little bit quirky, a little bit more off the wall, mm -hmm. might not okay. have come across before, but I think you're going to like them and they're great alternatives to the mainstream wines. Okay. Sounds good. Can we just get stuck into the alcohol? We, we can absolutely get stuck into it. Should okay. we go for the first home Yeah, wine? open them, open them. Okay. Are they screw cap? Because I don't know about you, Tony, but I've always heard I always think that's a bit common to bring a screw cap. Is that right or is that a myth? Not at all. It's a complete myth. Okay. Most of the time. This is a screw cap because it there happens to be... ...conscious decision a few years ago okay. in New Zealand to go for wines that were entirely screw cap. Why? Be because we're too stupid to use cork screws? No, not at all. Because, the simple <laughs> fact is, is that okay. cork presents some problems in that the cork can cause taint in the wine. Well, it's a Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough, classic style of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc wine. I always think of this as a bit citrusy, Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, Sauvignon Blanc is, is citry gooseberries, exactly. It's oh, oh, stop! Oh, he, he stop it. nailed it, no, I didn't. Don't, we don't need to do this, he knows about it already. <laughs> okay, let's do it, let's okay, do it, come yeah, on. Oh, that's nice. That's nice, Tony that Drigo. That is nice, isn't it? What and do you, got, you make of it? I, I really like it. I'm tasting those blocks. slight berries, those gooseberry things you're gooseberry, talking about. Gooseberries, isn't it? A really important way to get those is you mainly get those through your smell as well as your taste. Right. So really stick that nose back into it. As you go in for a taste, the first thing that hits you... I love it when Nick you, gets a bit masterful, doesn't he? Stick your nose in. I love it when Nick the gets like The first thing that. that hits you is that big whack of gooseberry and that grassiness, those tropical aromas. And that's what will then feed into the taste buds. Okay, this is my favourite so far, but then we have only had one. <laughs> What do you reckon, Tony? Do you like this? This is a winner. You finished already. the entire glass. No, I, I will leave some. No, I won't. Typical okay. Australian. <laughs> Typical Australian. So, in terms of your wine experience and mm. things, mm. there's obviously a big drinking culture in football, isn't there? Mm. Really? I had no idea what I've you're talking about. I've heard there is. <laughs> I actually didn't drink a lot at all. Did you not? No, I didn't. No, I was the odd one. Uh, you certainly lads, were. Yeah, a lot of lads liked to have their, their beers and things, but I wasn't. That didn't seem to enjoy that. I think as I got older, and then went to some nice restaurants, I kind of enjoyed the wines with the food and that's kind of where I, I got into the wine. Um, can we try the next wine please? We absolutely can. So we want something a little bit alternative. This is what we've just had, okay. but different, in that it is Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. but we're going back to Europe. <gasps> he said that in such a dramatic fashion. Back to Europe. It was very Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the Loire Valley in France. It's made by a winemaker called Franz Saumont. 
France Saumon's Sauvignon de Touraine, the Loire Valley. Really good with seafood. Okay. Give it a good swirl as How well. Much what does that do exactly? Sorry, because yeah. he keeps swirling it. What, yeah. What's that all about? <laughs> that's oxygen or something. That's just getting some oxygen into, okay. into, okay. The, into okay. the liquid, really, and releasing those aromas. Does it work? Because I think when yeah. I see men do that in restaurants, I think they're being a bit pretentious. No, it absolutely works. Absolutely really? works. Okay. So you'll notice a huge difference between when you haven't swilled it and when you have. And you're all evening. Like you'll all know notice. You'll also <laughs> notice a big difference in the glass as well. Really? Yeah. If you have a big glass like that, then you're going to be getting a lot more aroma captured. Oh. Yeah. And it, it curves up like that in order to capture aromas, aromas in the bowl, and to direct them towards your nose. Let's try this now. Have a taste of it and see okay. if you can notice a big difference. I'm drunk already. Oh. Tony? That is a lot different. The Loire Valley wines tend to have a much higher acidity to them okay. because it's a cooler climate. So you don't get as much, I guess, fruit flavour from the grapes. Mm. But what you do have is that kind of grassy Sauvignon Blanc aroma. Maybe not so much heightened gooseberry, but more elderflower. Yeah. Still very herbaceous, but not as full on. Are you enjoying no, it? I do actually quite like it. I, I'm yeah, getting I the feeling like you prefer the other one. Well, it, is, it seems slightly smoother, not as quite as pungent as uh, Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, but uh, it's nice. What do you tend to spend on wines? Because you footballers are quite flash with your cash. I played 20 years ago, all right? Let's not forget this, all right? Well, no, I want to um, talk to you about that. My favourite story ever is Ashley Cole almost having a car crash because he was told that his Arsenal salary was only £220,000 a month. And he was so that. disgusted. That is horrible, isn't it, when that happens? <laughs> what do you think about these inflated salaries? Well, it's market forces. Uh, you know, whatever a club will pay, and now they're, they're entertainers. Uh, they're just about owned by the public, so you get mm. paid accordingly. And if that's what the going rate is, then that's it. I think it's. Um, I get frustrated. I think when you get players that maybe come over from foreign countries and don't really understand that what the football club really means to the local population. Yeah. Uh, they there for the money and then off they go again. That that is frustrating. Sort of mercenaries in a way. Well, yeah. There's a few of them, but it's just that's the frustrating bit. But hey, yeah. good luck to the guys. Uh, they can spend a lot on wine. However, I spend a little bit less on wine. <laughs> <laughs> However, I still spend. I suppose when I buy a dozen bottles yeah. of uh, Saint Clair. I mean, they're up to. 18, 20 pounds a bottle, something yeah. like that. So it's a decent, a decent amount. I think uh, it's a market difference, I think, for, from a four or five pounds a bottle to something that you really like, and I enjoy it a lot more. So in your playing career, mm -hmm. though, where were you happiest? I always get the feeling you weren't that happy when you were at Chelsea. You asked for a transfer, didn't you? And I did. What happened? Uh, Ken Bates took me into the office. I wrote, actually, a transfer request. That must have been a scary moment. So when you want to try and ask for a transfer request, you, you, can, you put it in writing. So I wrote this page letter explaining why I thought uh, you know, I would like to go elsewhere. He invited me into his office. Was that um, an invitation in the way that John Corleone gives you an invitation? Yes, I found out afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he sat there stringing a case. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, he listened for about five minutes and said, listen, Tony, you've got two years left. There's the door now. Pop it. Really? And that was it. So I waited two years and left. And then you left. And then I left. I think that was the right thing to do. That's all I could do. I had yeah. no choice. That was the problem. OK, I think it might be time for... Some red wines. I was going to say number three, and then I couldn't remember how to say three in Italian. Already? Tony? Uno, due, tre. Very good. Yeah. I just wanted to hear him say no. that. <laughs> come on, then. Now we're going to go into another grape, which we might all have come across before, Pinot Noir. Oh, I like that. Do, do you, you like that? Yeah. I've not had much of this. Okay. Well, we're going, we're going I, back... I don't believe that. We're going me. back towards your neck of the woods, Tony. This is back down to New Zealand. Where's that from? This guy's from everywhere. Can I tell you what I find very suspicious? Okay. Suspicious? Yes. I'm going to be well, totally honest with you, Tony Drigo. Go on, then. So you have an Italian father. Yes. You have an Irish-Australian Irish mother. mother. Yes. And you played for England. Do you know someone in the passport office? No, you guys were desperate. That's all I'm saying. You needed an Aussie to come and play for you. Uh, no, because of my Italian passport, um, through my father. Oh, of course, yeah. That's how I got my Italian passport. Yeah. Because they're in the EEC, I could then come to England yeah. to play. Uh, a work permit then every six months was renewed. Uh, and I was about to play for Australia when I was 18 in their World Cup qualifiers against Cook Islands, American Samoa. I love that something team. Something else. I don't know who they were or where they were. Uh, I was going to play at Old Trafford. I was going to play at Highbury. I was going to play at these places. So I had to turn it down at the time. Yeah. And then England came and asked me, would I play wow, for them? Wow, you've you got your first years, call up. Yeah, if you wait five years, then uh, we'd like to get you to play for us. So, uh, so and I when you joined, when you initially signed for Villa, wasn't that the result of something like you sent off a bunch of letters or something? Yes. I yes. think this is the sweetest story. Did you know this? 
You sent off, it was like applying to be an intern or something. Didn't you just send off 15 of them or something? 12. I, I picked the top Who 12. Does that? In the, I did. <laughs> I picked the top 12 in the division and just wrote a letter saying how good I was and could I please have a trial. Uh, one team replied, that was Aston Villa. You weren't tempted by Aussie rules. Are you kidding? You see the size of me. <laughs> <laughs> they grab me and fling me around the place. So no, <laughs> soccer was my game. Yeah. So this is from New Zealand. Okay. It's again from Marlborough. It's the same um, same winemaker as the Sauvignon Blanc we just had. It's the All That Jazz Pinot Noir. Slight increase oh. in price here. Now you're getting up to this 14, 15 pounds mark. Okay. Pinot Noir tends to be a little bit pricier because it's a really tricky grape to grow. This is more the stuff that I would expect my date to order. Yeah. I'm not messing about with that five pound stuff, <laughs> just so you know. Think of red fruit flavours yes, rather I think, than black think? fruit flavours. So oh, think okay, of things like, like raspberries, strawberries, not, strawberries, not blackberries. Not blackberries. Okay. You yeah. said that like you'd had a bad experience with blackberries in the past. No, we just said there's okay. not black fruits. <laughs> I think that's the only one I know is blackberries. <laughs> so give okay. it a swell. Okay. Tony, what I quite like it. It's mellow. What do you Ooh. think? Mm, Ooh. I like it. Yeah, okay. you're getting those berry flavours. Yeah, it, it, it smells like a lovely sort of damp wood. Yes, it's woody. It's like berry woody. picking in the woods. Absolutely right. Woody. Oh, oh, I love oh, it. Stop oh, it. Says that. <laughs> no, absolutely right. Pinot Noir, you get those classic fruit flavours, okay. but then you get this thing which we call in in, in wine the, the developing flavours. So the secondary flavours, secondary yeah. aromas. This has got those secondary aromas of, as you said, kind of like a woodland floor. Oh. I quite like it. There's a little kick afterwards, which is very apt with Tony Dorigo here. Oh, I like this. I want to ask you about Italian 90. Yes. When you think about the people you were playing with, it's Gary Lineker, Peter Beardsley, you know, Paul Gascoigne. What was it like? It's funny, you look back at that team now, and we had a bit of everything in that team. We had some, really some, did. some you know, leaders at the back. Uh, we had some great players in midfield with possibly Paul Gascoigne, goal scorers at the top. It started off slowly though, didn't it, I remember? No, that's right. Yeah. And I think, let's say, I think we understood the position or the, the formation we played better. Uh, we just got better and better. And um, mm. semi-final, even thinking about it now, is a deeply, I remember everything about it, unfortunately, way too vividly, and the penalty misses and everything else. But that experience of playing in the World Cup was fantastic. Um, are we still on this wine, or are we going to go on to another wine? The wine world does not know English wines that well. So, no, with no further Sorry. ado, okay. let's get it out. Come on. We have a Pinot Noir from England, specifically from Kent. It's from the Gusborne estate in Kent. That's so pale. It yeah. is. As you were tipping it, look, you can see straight through That's it. That's Ribena. <laughs> it's very pale. Yeah. yeah. Very pale. And that's just because it hasn't ripened as much as okay. the one from New Zealand. It hasn't had all the sunshine and the heat. But it's still, if you put your nose into it, got the same sort of aromas, those berry okay. flavours. Raspberries, strawberries. Okay. Let's go for Have it. Have a taste. Mm. Okay. It's not, I don't want, I like it, but it's, there's like a metallic thing, or what is it? Generally, it seems... Turn, like turned down, minerals and turned down a little bit. Yeah, no, but very, there's quite very... a nice aftertaste, almost like biscuity or something that I quite like. I don't know what that is, like rich, mm. quite rich afterwards. Okay, it's talk quite, us through. It's quite minerally. Well, the first thing that I really notice in the mouth there is the acidity. Yes. It's got much higher acidity than the New Zealand wine, because mm. New Zealand, warmer, sunnier again, so it gets riper. When a grape ripens, it loses acidity and it gains sugars. So in a much oh. cooler climate like Kent, yeah, it doesn't so you quite get, get that much California sugar. really sweet rosé, That's that you get that, is that to do with the same that's, reason? Yeah, it's got a yeah. sugar in it. It's got that little peppery finish to it as well, I that's think, it, which peppery. is quite different. Ah. Yeah, you, you, you tend to get that with, with Pinot Noir, particularly when it hasn't been overly ripened. Mm. Okay, well, let's nice. have another taste, I like yeah. this. Now, um, Tony, I want to ask you about your time in Italy then. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy it there? I absolutely loved it, yeah. My, my great regret, I think, I didn't go to Italy earlier in my career. Uh, I went there at 32, 33, and towards the end, so I would have liked to have really had a go in Serie A, because I think it suited my style, mm. also more, more technical, uh, right. but I just think they were really ahead of the game in the way they looked after the, the players physically, really? uh, the training methods. It, they were very professional, and I really did enjoy it, and uh, it went well for me. They were professional, except for the match fixing. A minor problem, because <laughs> <laughs> let's not go there, I've had enough trouble as it is. Uh, yeah, I played in an odd game. Yeah. Uh, it was... It was. Um, it did go on though, didn't it? I mean, it famously went on. It famously went on a lot. And I think it's hard to get it out of the Italian psyche as well. 
because it oh, went being, on being well, corrupt. well because it went on for so long and, and it was so uh, normal towards the end of a season that that did happen to tell them actually th this is wrong you can't do it uh, was difficult I remember going around the room when the the owners came in for one particular game uh, and my Italian was getting better and better or so I thought because mm. I'm sure that the owner said we're going to have a draw <laughs> I said no no no, that can't be right because we won the last one we're, are we going to have a draw that can't be right so we went around the room to all the players and asked them uh, if they agreed and they all said si 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 come to me I said no no impossible they thought I was crazy absolutely crazy you knew what they, they were suggesting on. at the time I knew exactly what yeah. they were suggesting because the skipper then went down with a cold our star player, Gigi yeah. Mantini, who was once the world's most expensive player, yeah. he then had a hamstring injury. The right back, his grandma died. Someone, no one went to this away game, apart from me and a few others. You were and the schmuck. I was the schmuck. I played right back. That's how bad things were. <laughs> and unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, at half time, I couldn't play anymore. It was embarrassing. Really? And um, we drew nil-nil. Um, awful. So on Footballers Wines, we like to try and match our guests to a wine, if that makes sense. I understand that you've come up with a little something for us that you think totally suits Tony's personality. Yeah, well, I think I have. I hope, I hope Tony agrees. Be very careful. The wine I've picked is, well, you'll see why. Okay. Tony being someone from Australia, yes. who came over to England to play for England, to, to yes. play in England and not necessarily play for England, but then did end up playing for England. So he's someone from one part of the world who's made his home in another part of the world. Yes, that's so true. far so good. So far so good. <laughs> now I've actually picked a German wine. <gasps> that's a really sore point. Did you not see <laughs> the semi-finals in 1990? <laughs> that's only just dawned on me, I'm afraid, Emily. Tony, only just I'm dawned so on me. So sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> I have had therapy for years. <laughs> you do understand. You think he's joking? He has. <laughs> he told me he has. It's a German wine made by a friend of mine called Marcus Schneider. Marcus was asked, "Can you make a wine in Germany?" that is like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. And he said, yeah, sure, I'll have a go. And Maybe this is the result. Went, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Sure. Yeah. He said he'd have a go. And this is the result. Should we try? Let's well, give it a go. Okay. But it's further and north, yet it's closest yeah, to the key. Yeah, exactly. And Marcus is a very skilled winemaker, and he's able to make wines in a much more powerful style than you expect from Germany. And the good thing about this German wine is when they pour it in, they don't miss ever. <laughs> so, sorry, Tony. <laughs> If I start with I'm a twitch all of a sudden. We need to get it out of the way <laughs> with. It's, you know, it's okay. in the room. Okay. Okay. Oh, I like the colour already. It is, it is lighter. It's closer in colour to maybe the French Sauvignon Blanc, because you yeah. haven't got the same heat and, and sunshine as you do in New Zealand. Oh, Tony, that smells nice. Stick your nose in that. <laughs> that smells nice. That's what you said to members of the German team. <laughs> Should we taste it, Tony? Yes, please. Let's go. Let's go for it. Oh, I love that. That's my favourite of the day. The Tony Dorigo wine Flip and is the best. This, stuff. this is great. It is so, I isn't it? it? Actually, it's very nice. I, I think it marries the, the best, that sort of searing crispness of the French one with the tropicalness of the so New Zealand. They're so these wine people, aren't they? Very nice. You describe it wonderfully. As yeah. I'm drinking it, carry on, please. We are getting okay. drunk, though, in fairness. <laughs> you, you have it's got that sort of that, that mangoey pineapple melon kind yes, of flavour. Yes, I taste the mango. It. Yeah. But then. On the nose, you still got it's that bit, it's sort got of that elderflower. Yeah. Where the French one didn't have that whatsoever. This mm. one really, really has. So nice. somehow, Marcus Schneider has managed to create a wine in Germany, which is actually like it's from the other side of the world. Yeah. So there you go. That's the Tony Dorigo wine. Marcus Schneider's Kaitui Sauvignon Blanc, 2012, and that comes in at about £15. Um, footballers wouldn't make it to the top without loving a bit of healthy competition so we've got a little game to play to find out if tony can cut it in the wine world it's footballer versus wine if drinking wine is the goal then what i'm about to test is the assist i speak of course of the opening and pouring of wine in front of tony there's an unopened bottle and an empty glass against the clock tony will have to open the bottle of wine and because i'm a classy date pour his best guess at a single unit of wine into the empty glass. That's 175 millilitres for all you statos out there. For every millilitre that Tony's out by on the pouring, we'll add a second to his time. Also, because we like style over substance, our insanely handsome wine expert, Nick here, will also be on hand to time Tony and add a maximum of 10 penalty points to his time if he commits wine crimes. 
like spilling the wine, breaking the cork, or shoving the bottle between your legs. So Australian, Tony. Now, Tony, just so you've got something to compete against, before the show, I had a go myself, and I can exclusively reveal that I completed the challenge in a time of one minute and 31 seconds. So no pressure, Mr. Leftback. How are you feeling about this? Uh, I'm ready, I think. We'll see. Okay, Tony, your time begins on Nick's whistle, and it ends when you put the bottle on the bar after the pour. Is that clear? It's clear. I think it's over to you, Nick. Okay, here we go. Ready? That was loud, that whistle. I'm worried about him with this corkscrew. Well, I think that in terms of style, he's doing pretty well there so far. He's got he's got the right intention of keeping the... No, I think he's just missed a bit around he's, the he's edge. Cho he's, cho he's choking on this international stage. But, I mean, you can just go to rip the whole thing off. It doesn't look as classy. If you're taking yourself out for dinner, I and mean, you want to open it up and make sure that you've still got a bit yeah, of foil down yeah. the bottom. So, I think this is the right approach. He's certainly not going to be marked down for start, like but he's... He's taking a while. He's going at it with brute force. He's like Greece play football. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They, they what won is... a European Championship on that. That's fair enough with that approach. Oh, he's pouring oh, off he's, that he's, lid. He's, he's opened it up like Okay, a... he's going... Oh! Ooh, there we go. <laughs> he's going in now. He's going in. Oh, look at the determination of the boy. Look it's at that. Good. No, it's good. It's good twisting action. Okay, he's gearing up now. This, this is, is the important this bit. This is a bit important Ooh. set piece if you for don't Tony get it going, If you don't get it going straight up, then you might split the court. But no, that's no. looking good so far. He's doing all right. He's going to make it. Just one more little tussle with that. Yes. OK. Right. Now, let's see how he does it. Is he going to overshoot it? He's already had a little bit of spillage. But that's OK. I think he's done a pretty good job. I think it's OK, isn't it? My goodness, it went everywhere. What happened there? <laughs> Tony, mm. how do you think it went? It was okay, it, but I think that first bit was quite difficult. I can't believe I spilt it as well. To recap, I did the test in 91 seconds. That sounds quick to me. It's pretty good, I was <laughs> proud of myself. I can now reveal to you, Nick, do some sort of drum roll thing. Without noise. Okay. <laughs> drum roll. Do you know what, it's working for me, obviously. <laughs> carry, carry on doing that a bit longer. Um, your time so far is 78 seconds. Mmm, okay. What we're going to do now, I've got your glass here, let's pour it into the measuring device to see if you've got anywhere near the holy grail of 175 millilitres. Let's go, you ready Nick? I'm ready. Is it all working? Yeah. Okay. This is a battery operated jug, it's extraordinary the technology now. It's 103. Oh. 103. So you're 72 millilitres out. 72! Tony it's a lot, isn't it? So that pushes your time of 78 up to... 150. Ooh! And there's a few more to Finally, the no. no. But we're going to go over to Nick for your star points. Oh, no. mm. we, did, we did have the spillage, yes. I'm afraid. Yes. And yes. it wasn't just one spillage, it was two little spillages as well. So I am going to mark you down... Nick, you're so harsh. If you're going to do I... it, do it properly. Yeah. Spill. No, I am going to mark you down a couple of points yes. for that. Really? But I, I'm gonna, that's all I'm going to keep it to, because while you did go out a lot on the measurement, I do quite like an elegantly low filled glass, so I'm going to keep it to two points. I'll bear that in mind. Um, okay, so what's his, what's his total then? Well, you had your 78 seconds, you're out by 72 millilitres, two penalty points, so you're up to 152, Tony. Oh, Tony Dorigo. Not even close. I'm going to write your score on this rather fabulous, I'm going to call it, it's like an avatar of you, and it's when you didn't have a perm. <laughs> <laughs> your time was good. My time, my time was impressive. Anyone would almost again. think it was fixed. I've been hanging out with those Italians, <laughs> haven't I? <laughs> Sadly, that's pretty much all we've got time for today on Footballers Wines. But just before we go, we all know that these days the best way to get in the manager's good books is to take him a bottle of wine. Tony, when you think of all the managers you played under, who do you think of as the gaffer? Uh, Howard Wilkinson. I, I was going to say Wilco. It, it would be Wilco, yeah. Sergeant Wilco, he's the one that, uh, even now, when I see him, it's hard to not call him the boss, really. OK. If you were going to take Wilco, a bottle of wine, which one, out of all the ones that Nick's shown us, would you go for? I'm going to go for the German little number. <gasps> really? I am going for that one. I thought about a big, bold red, because he, he does like his... He's a bit of a foodie and a, a, 
drink buff. However, and he's I robust. Like, he's robust, but I like the story behind it. Tony, I love your choice. Can I just say, I think we need to put it on. It's it's got like a little Olympic plinth here, so um, I can't lean over because I might reveal I something. So I think you need to. There it goes. Ta da! That's all from us today. All the information on this episode's wines can be found on our website. We're on wine and online. Again, they made me say that pun at footballerswines.co.uk. Thanks to Nick from Red Squirrel Wines. I'm a convert. And also to our guest, Mr. Tony Dorigo. See you all next time. Bye.